Now that we have established our general knowledge on uh, creating procedural objects, controlling some of the parameters, creating iterations, arrays, reading, writing and all that, I want to put everything together and create something that actually does something very specific. And in this case, it's a very simple bar graph. And uh, the data I'm going to use is just an array. And by changing the numbers, you can create the bar, the equivalent bar, and you can go and add more of these and adjust the height. And depending on the height, it will actually change colors. So we're going to see how we're going to do this. And I'm going to explain all the details along the way. So we have a new scene. And the first thing I want to bring up is a primitive. And I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to make it 50 by 50 by 50 to begin. And uh, let me just connect it to the scene so I can see it. And I want to go and add some rounding. So enable the fillet. Let's make this five. Excellent. We need to make copies of it. We need to change the size of it. And all the data is going to be driven by an array. So let's go and create our array. C and let's create an uh, array. And uh, I'm going to use the build. And uh, the data is going to be a simple float, just a number. And I'm going to start with uh, six elements. And I can go and name these. In my previous example, I named them by months. Uh, but uh, that's not important right now. So first of all, we need to create some sort of um, distribution, which means that we will need a matrix object. So C matrix operator. I said object, but I meant operator. And uh, I can get from this array the, the values. I'm going to do a read value. And let's put it here. And this read value is going to read the array. And the index is going to be read by a range. So C range. Let's get a range. Let's set the end to the length of the array. And let's put the range in the index. So each and every one of these values, which I'm going to go and put 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 100 are going to be read by iterating the array through the read value and with the help of the range. Now, these are the values that are coming out. So what I'm going to do with these values is I'm going to set the size y of the cube, so this little middle thing. But this is a vector. It has three components. So I need to compose a vector 3D. And I'm going to put this in here. And now I can go and change these. So I can make it 20 by 20 by 50. Now you will see that when this becomes much smaller, you will see it disappears. That's because its height is smaller than the actual radius. So let me go and make the radius 2. And uh, we will adjust that so that it works nicely and it never disappears. What I'd like to do ideally is that I want this to have a height of 5 when the value is 0. So this will be the smallest of all the squares. So remember this number 5. And the next thing we're going to do now, which is quite important, is the following. You can see from the side, and I can go to one of my orthographic views here, you will see that half my cube is under the floor. And if I make this taller, you will see that it grows in both directions. What I want to do is I actually want to make it always sit on the ground. This means I have to move it up half the value of its height. And the height is the y component of my vector. So let's go and do that. First of all, I'm going to feed that in the matrix. And for that, I need a compose matrix of so C, compose, compose matrix. Excellent. I'm going to put that over there. Then I need another compose vector. So I'm going to grab this and make a copy, pressing Command or Control. I'm going to put this in the translation. And uh, as I said before, this needs to be half the value of this. So I'm going to get a divide. So arithmetic divide, divide by 2. And what am I going to divide by 2? I'm going to divide whatever that value is. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to use a value. Excellent. 
I'm going to use this for now, which I'm going to put in here to define the Y height. You can see that goes over there. I'll show you why uh, this happens. And uh, I'm going to put this in here and this in here. In this compose vector, I have these two values, and I need to make them zero. So make sure that all your values are correct. Now, if I take this and start growing it, you will see that it grows from its base, because whenever the number changes, it makes it taller and then raises it using this data path to go upwards by half its height. So it's always based on the ground. Good, let me go back to my perspective view. There you go. So the height has been figured out. And uh, what I could do is I can go and say, I want these values to be fed here. You can use a simple value node if you wish, just to have some sort of junction to bring a value in and then split it out into other values. Uh, it doesn't do anything specific. It just allows you to use one connection from here and then you can feed any number of connections on the other side. So let me do this and let me turn on my lines and you can see we have all these bars, but they're stacked on top of each other. So the next thing I need to do is find a way to translate these on the X value or the Z value. It depends how I want my graph to look. I'm going to put them on the Z value. So we need to take our range and as usual use a multiply, see multiply, to define how much they're going to move apart. So take the range, let's say they're going to move 50 apart and take this 50 and put it in the Z. And the main graph is done. Now just with this setup, if I go and change the numbers, you will see that each element grows. Fantastic. Now I want to do some uh, changes here because if I make this 5, let's make it smaller than 5, it disappears, right? You can see I don't want that to happen. So I want the height of each of these cubes to have a set minimum. So what I'm going to do is take this float value, which could be a 0, right? So let's go to the first one and make it a 0. And when this is a zero, I want the height to be five. So that's a very simple thing to do. I can go and add five to this. So C, add, take an arithmetic node, go here, put this in here, put this in the Y, and let's add five. And there you go. They all grew by five, but that's not really a problem because essentially now when I go down to zero, it will have this minimum height and everything else pretty much represents exactly what we want. If you want to be extremely accurate, you can use a range mapper and stuff like that, but that's not the scope. You can go ahead and do it as homework and be proud of yourselves. Excellent. So we've created this. Now, the next step is to go and create the colorization. I want to colorize these based on their height. Now, we're going to use a new node, one we haven't used yet, and uh, that is called the aggregate. Let me show you aggregate. There we go. The aggregate allows us to do some uh, very specific uh, arithmetic operations. For example, get the average of any number of uh, values. Uh, I can get the maximum, the median, the minimum, a range, a sum, and all that. So it's very, very useful. Now, it becomes even more useful if we turn it to stream mode. In stream mode, we can feed an iteration of values, and it will give us, for example, the max, because knowing what the maximum value is will allow us to put that as an input for a range mapper. Let me show you what that will do. See range mapper. Let's bring it in. And what I'm going to do is take the result, the maximum value from whatever comes in, in this particular case, it will be every single number from the array. And I'm going to connect it up to show you exactly how that works. I'm going to take this and put it input max. And I'm going to take from zero to whatever the maximum value of this is and map it to zero to one.
because I'm going to use this output in a gradient and the gradient works with values from 0 to 1. Now let me show you how this works though. There's this very particular input here which is called the inner scope. Now the name sounds a bit odd but basically this is the iterating construct. As we go into more complex setups in the node system, this inner scope will start showing up in more and more places. And it's specifically designed to receive an iteration. So all I have to do is put the range in the inner scope. Now what's going to happen, it's going to iterate and I need to synchronize this value stream with the unique values coming from when we iterate the array. And this is the value coming from the read value. So Remember, the range iterates through the array and spits out each value individually. So I'm going to take this and put it here. So the inner scope creates the looping mechanism by which each of these values is going to be evaluated by the aggregate node and it's going to output from each complete cycle of this range the highest number. So now, whatever the numbers are, whatever the highest number is, that's going to be used to define the maximum value of our input. Fantastic. The last thing I need to do is go and create a gradient. So I'm going to bring in the gradient. I'm going to feed the position with the result. And let me make some space here. Good, so we can see the gradient. And I need to go and colorize these. And I'm going to use a color operator. Let me put this in the stream. And let me put the color over here and everything turns black because the gradient is receiving just the result from the range mapper but the range mapper does not have a value the only thing i need to do is go and feed again from the read value the value in the range mapper and there you go now the gradient colors propagate to a normalized value from zero to one when the highest is one and the lowest is zero. So I can go now and load a nice little preset. I can remove some of these colors over here and over here. I can right click here and distribute my knots. And from this point onwards, depending on the value of each and every one of these numbers, the colors are going to change and the rest are going to be remapped. Fantastic. I can even go and add more data increase the colorization. I can turn off my lines so you can see them clearly. And I can go and uh, do things like change the distance between them. I can change the actual size of the graph. I can make it flat, make it thick, and so forth. The final little touch we're going to put in this video is uh, to create a group out of this. So I'm going to go and uh, Press Command or Control A to select everything. Right click and group the nodes. Fantastic. I'm going to call this Simple Bar Graph. Fantastic. Let me go closer. And now let me click on the little folder so I can go inside and I can start propagating certain values. So first of all, let's see. We need to get the elements. I'm going to go close so I can show you what I'm doing. If you propagate this, it will propagate all this interface. So get the elements and put them here. And let's call them graph values. Enter. And you can see now in the attributes that we have this interface. And I can go and change these values. Let me close this down. I'm not going to need any of those values. Let's go and see what else we need here. We need the spacing. So let's go here and propagate the port and call it spacing. Fantastic. And if I go here, you can see the spacing is down here, and I can change the spacing. I can go and propagate uh, the thickness if I want to. So let me get the depth. This is the depth. So the depth defines the depth of these cubes. Let's go here and bring this over, and let's call this width. Good. And again, it works really nicely, the width. Let's go and see where the spacing is. The spacing is here, the depth and the width. We have all those parameters. And uh, I think that the last thing we need is the gradient. So grab the gradient from here and just drag it and rename this 
to colors and you can always just twirl it closed so it doesn't take up too much space there we go let's go up and now we have our full group and we have all the parameters here we need to change the values add or remove components and we can go and change the colors we can load a preset we can change the depth and everything else we need to change so by now you might have constructed your first useful asset if uh, bar graphs is what you do but it's just a simple example how you can spend very little time putting something together that actually has some practical usefulness